first, by popular request, it has some chip. Who will probably freak out and want out because the door is closed, but right now he's just being per boy. Floof is not in here, it's a hot summer day. So she's um <laughs> she's laying against the toilet as a heat sink. Alright, so we're just gonna jump right in hello chip. Right into dolls and see how many of the remaining eight in the box plus one, I guess, bonus doll we have left that I will get through. With the chip in my lap. Alright. This is another outfit. I'm not too sure if it's going to work. So we'll see if that turns into another 17 minute wire, like the last one. So taking off of her pants that I share the pattern for. And, um, and she did chip. You go and chip. You noticing the door's closed, chip? Yes, he's noticing the door's closed. Hold on, chip. Okay. Another thing I did that I'm not sure if it's going to be useful or not is this the bag of shoes that James sent that I would kind of forgotten about and so found in another video back there. I uh, went through and just randomly pulled out several pairs of shoes that caught my eye. No idea if I'd be inclined to put them on anyone at any point. See, do I want to find a completely different shirt for her or do I want to use the shirt that she was wearing? Because there's going to be a jacket over it. Let me uh, look quickly in the small shirts. I should know what was in here since I spent so much time the other day. I could pull out a um, made-to-move shirt just to be arbitrary, but oh, actually I think I will use this. I'll go ahead and put this away since it's... Yes, one black Barbie shirt for a different black Barbie shirt. Oh, I just realized I normally put my desk lamp down for this video, so it's not in the video. I just realized it was visible, so. Alright, so long enough to cover the top of the pants. Again, I had only a small amount of this fabric to work with. And at first I thought I would make a dress just emphasizing these angled stripes on it and make a dress, you know, where the colors meet and change, but it wasn't, it was like too big a print for that to work well. And then I had the idea to make this jacket with the color stripes changing. You see how they change on the sleeves and on that side of the jacket. So that's what I did with this jacket and I think it turned out as probably one of my favorite pieces from this big mess of doll clothes that I made but I made just so many that there's a lot of or do I just want to put her back in the shoes she was wearing before? I might do that. Alright, do I have any necklaces? And of course, thanks to Chip, there's doll there's cat hair, doll hair. Cat hair on everything here now. I think I'm using that black triangle. Barbie necklace from one of the fashion packs. Oh, this might work. Now it's a little too blue to go with the purples and the pinks and the mauves. No, oh, what about this? I'm envisioning a shorter necklace. But this definitely matches the coral stripes. I don't know, I want a shorter necklace. I prefer it to be black plastic. But it might end up with something else completely. That's a one band. Alright, 
the problem with grabbing them in that area like that is it kind of creates spaces and gaps between them and then they don't want to fit in back in as quickly as I want to put them back in. Like I know what necklace I'd like to use, and it is being used by another doll right now. Make sure that doll's not in here, and you can't just... Still, I think I know exactly what doll it is, so let me go grab it. And see if it works with this outfit the way I think. And this the, is, of course, a repainted Mattel Disney Pocahontas head that I sculpted hair from Poxy Putty. And she's on a made to move body. And yeah, I used most of this cloth to make this jacket, and then there was just a few little scraps left, and then I put that on the front of the cuffs, fake cuffs of his pants, because why not? And I didn't even think of the time when I did it that I could use that to make the pants coordinate with the jacket. But here we are. Alright, grab the next doll. I still need to deglue her head. It is so gummy and tacky, but I did paint over her face a little bit. And this is a body that Cosmo made as a hybrid between an original unarticulated curvy body and Wonder Woman parts. So we might have a slight shoe problem for her. I hope that hand fits through this shirt sleeve. The uh, grip hand, no problem. The slightly splayed hand should, because these things are fairly well designed, to fit through the same space, usually. Yes, actually work better than most hands that are not, um, that are slightly splayed. And I've used this cloth for several things, and this was the last bit of it left, and then this is the last. Although I forgot when I picked out this um, lace that I was going to run it all the way from one cuff to the other cuff. So I initially cut it, well, so when I actually started cutting things out, I cut it to be the same width as this, and I thought, well, there's a lot of it left, and I realized, oh yeah, I was going to fall asleep. So that's why I put this side there, because I wanted to use it all up. And then these shorts are made from a... Um, Ocean creature print that again I got from local doll person. You see, there's like part of a jellyfish in the front, and I didn't realize again I was not paying attention to the print. There's a lovely eel on the backside. And again, I made all this stuff randomly. I did not think about whether they might actually be able to go together or not. And this is the size of shorts, pants pattern I used that could fit Kirby or Ken. So here we are now. She needs shoes. Let's see if I find anything. Oh, I think I know actually. I know what you wear, but I'm going to find a bag in. Someday I'll get everything more organized. Maybe. I think those wrestler gal shoes will fit on the Wonder Woman body, especially since they seem to have stuffed it with um, tissue paper already. I think that's pretty reasonable. There's not a lot of choice for that size foot, which is why we did a lot of things like cut 
the Wonder Woman boots. Cut most of these apart, so there's just the bottom left as a kitty little pair of sandals. And most of the wrestling lady shoes that I end up with are the boots. Because I'm guessing the people kept the nice shoes for themselves, which are just fine. Boots do have their uses. All right, so do I need a hat or anything? No. All right, so there's that outfit. Okay, and then here's another doll that doll junk painted. wearing kind of random clothes. I made the shirt and the pants were 90s Barbie things that at some point got cut down. Not by me, James sent them, so I don't know if James did it or if they're like that when he acquired them. But at least for a little while, Style Forecast was saying that short, wide-legged, raw-edge denim pants were going to be trendy again, so I just with input on it. Alright, so now I have this, again this is some of that tie cloth that Tiffy sent. So I used that jacket pattern again and made a skirt to go with it. I don't know if this needs a shirt or if the jacket closes enough that it will look okay without something under it. And I stretched and stitched a piece of elastic on the inside of the back to kind of fit it, make it a little more fitted in the back than it wanted to be. I think it could benefit from a shirt, maybe. If I can find one that seems like it's going to be the right size to put That's a vest. Okay. Alright, that's completely not the direction I was thinking. I'm going to go with that. This is from that weird white, I mean, dead chalk white, Gumby body, QTM, party girl, doll figure thing that was initially around in the early 2000s. And yes, it's pretty loose. On this doll, let's see, I don't know if I can do anything to make it. Fit better if I'll just live with it being loose under the jacket. Oh, that's a loosely woven silk. Her thumb just went through it. Of course, that's why it's so supple and makes a good necktie. I guess it could have been a little more fitted. 
the jacket. Like I said, it's a pattern that I created in the 90s by scanning. A commercial patterns, you know, the, if you ever use a commercial pattern, there's always a thing on the instructions that show you what the pieces are in, that are going to be included in the pattern. So I scanned that. And, um, Alright, so that's something I didn't think about. This doesn't quite fasten the back. I'm the fit model that I used when I was sewing this stuff is a uh, an original Barbie body, which I guess has a little less um, posterior. I know it had more waist, but I guess it has a little less posterior than the slightly older fashionista's body. But that's okay. I'm gonna keep her. And do I want to just use a pair of shoes from this pile here? Or do I want to take that? That doesn't fit her again. She's slightly older foot size. Try not to knock everything over. shoes. I think these are knockoffs that somebody sent me. I know there are legitimate Barbie shoes in this shape, but these are just a little bit small and have a lot of flash, so I really need to get those away. Oh, you know, we're going to go overkill. But these are actual fashionista shoes. Actually, I wish that I had a proper matching pair for either of these. This would be perfect. Let's see, does that. It's not quite the right color. Okay, fine. What else do I have? That's close. Is that close? Too far. Too small. Oh, come on. Surely I have a pair of shoes that match either of the pinks, the red, or the reds in this. Out of the inside. All right, right now I'm good with these shoes. And then I get a wild idea to see if I have a little delicate scarf that can work with this. A delicate scarf. I don't have big obnoxious scarves. Maybe that. That's an actual Barbie scarf, which surprised me. I figured I'd be doing something using something DIY. Scarf, 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 little scarf, not big bulky scarf. I have lots of bulky scarves that would probably be the right set of colors. If I could ever figure out how to, I really... I mean, I know I made this, but that doesn't mean I know how to actually dress it all in it. This big, ridiculous equestrian print. Scarf, 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 scarf. Come on, scarf. 
I'm not sure they have something. Yeah, I think we need this a little bit, a little bit of lace. Just because I'm trying to stay ahead on um, time. Remembering how bad the last few videos got as far as how long it was taking me. to do things. I'm getting, I'm thinking instead of talking. I know, I know. The whole point of this series of videos is that to give you background noise. I don't expect you to actually sit down and watch an hour after hour after hour of me putting clothes on dolls. So I've got to remember to try to give you some noise. Lose her shoe again. Edit all that. Okay. Alright, next doll I grab is the one I call Allium. It's a Cyclops custom paint job I did on a fake dung head with. Uh, I cannot remember if this is a sappy wig or a funny worry wig. And she's currently wearing a pair of leggings that Cosmo made. And it's possible she might put them back on. I made the shirt. I made it for um, Goliope. But part of the fun of dressing the monstrously high, or the monstrously large monster high dolls, is that they are pretty much just old Barbie size across the chest, so that means a lot of the stuff that they wear um, has some chance of fitting Kirby too. Okay, so I did make this, I mean it's just hemming the side, and because I use a roller foot to hem, it's not even that much trouble, and these are things well it made sense. I know this fits, I had this on the Basquiat Barbie, it was a little loose, so I'm gambling it will fit curvy. Although it's going to be really short, I would probably need something under it. So yes, that fits curvy. Um, I won't say perfectly, but really, really well. And this, I, again, I'm assuming it's probably meant for Blythe, but if it was, it looks pretty roomy. Yeah, okay, maybe this was meant for Barbie because it's fitting the curvy body. Ooh. At least across the shoulders, I haven't, tr haven't tried to fasten it yet. Alright, um, now again, I just said with that other one, I'm not really good with getting these big scarves to fit, but at least this one you can tie kind of like a bandana, that big equestrian print scarf. I can never get it to hang.
Alright, so yeah, she definitely needs something on her legs. I don't know if we're looking for leggings or maybe even just another skirt because I can think. I can definitely think of a possible skirt if I find the bag that I have. No, that's this bag. I need to make a bigger bag for my curvy bottoms. Or I could give, I'm well, actually just thinking of a long skirt, but I could give her a shorter skirt too. Actually, I might go with that since it has purple on it. It could make it, you know, tie it back to the top. But I was originally thinking this. So I'm going to tie this on hers. This is another thing I made for Goliope. It's just supposed to be a slip. So that is a look, maybe a little more romantic than what I usually go for. So let's try this skirt I made. I believe this is also a pattern I shared, a curvy A-line skirt. might work, but she's still probably going to fit from leggings or tights. So let me see if there's anything in here. I could just give her leggings or tights and, um, shorts, shorts are like getting to ignore, shorts are ignoring the fact that she's wearing a fuzzy jacket with a scarf. So I don't think I'll do shorts. I think I will try. the sprue off. I think James sent me these two. Maybe they aren't even supposed to be for Curvy, but they're on Curvy. Alright, so yes, I do like the jeggings. So I'm going to put these away and then find shoes for her. something in this pile of shoes that I picked up earlier that would work for Kirby. Are these Kirby? They have them. Oh yeah, those are Kirby. So again, that's not exactly as um, warm weather as the rest of her outfit though. Some slightly older, slightly out of style Barbie shoes, but they could work and they fit. Now these are curvy. I might those could work because of the purple. Let's see. I don't even know whose shoes these are. I don't think they go on this body though, because the toes stick out too much. Alright, I'm going to go with the purple flats. Alright, I would say she's done, but I want to see if they have any purses that work for her.
I mean, that's just amping up the cute. This is a Kern purse, and it's one of those things that I almost always have somebody using. And I will leave that same beret in her hair. And, okay, I gotta admit, this turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So, thanks again to Patty for... And whoever sent the jeans, I'm sorry if it wasn't James, if I've misremembered who sent them. Oh, well they have enough give that I can stretch them out and bag them over the ankles. Even better. Okay. So that's four dolls in uh, 34 minutes, okay. I don't think I'm going a lot faster, but, all right. Clothes I made, you've seen this cloth before, and a Janae head that I put on a made to move body. The match isn't perfect, but it's just nice getting a Janae on good articulation and I admit that what she's wearing is just loud because sometimes it's fun to make obnoxious doll outfits, you know. And the um, elastic is completely gone from these Golden Dream Barbie pants, so there's just some plastic packaging elastic wrapped around her waist to hold them up. vintage Barbie cover-up. When I thought it in the thrift store, the hood was all torn up, so it has been re-sewn to uh, work around the damaged area, and it, there's no way it's going to go over a doll's head right now, but it's a nice accent. This in. Emmy Moon sent me this Janae head, and um, the color's a little more earth tone than I think either she or I normally like, but I do need to have some variety in my dolls. The only reason I haven't considered rerouting her is because she is an integrity doll, so her head is, her vinyl is rock solid. Might, actually what I've mainly been doing is I've been trying to chip away at the glitter on her lips and eyeshadow a little bit at a time for the last few years. Eventually I'll get those shit away and then I'll think about maybe painting over bits and pieces to change the colors to be more my palette. But for now she's fine. It just sometimes makes it hard to find clothes in my stuff that will work with her. Yeah, the skirt fits fine on the body it's intended for. Same skirt pattern I used for that other one that did not fit the articulated fashionista's body at all. Alright, so again, another shirt that used a lot of bits of scrap lace. Someday I will get this. Right now this pattern is set up to fit older Barbie bodies, either the original Barbie body skirt pattern Either the original Barbie body or the older fashionista's body, so it does not fit modern bodies, so I'd need to tweak it before I would share it. 
as well as versus whether I wanted there to be waistband or have it be folded over with facing like this. The reason this is folded over with facing is because I didn't have enough to use a proper waistband. It's used a completely different fall. Completely different cloth for the facing too. And yes, this is the same cloth that I used for uh, these pants. I think I used the last of it with this shirt. Alright, any of these shoes work with this? When I recognize how out of date something is, then that usually gives me pause. I mean, I know these are from the 90s too. I don't know if it's worth I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna go focus on my little pocket of the purple shoes. Oh, maybe those little Oxford flats will work. Not really a great color match, but they're flats. Oh, there's a big stripe of black lace on her shirt. I can use black shoes. I'm not holding out hope for flats, because I think I've already used all my black flats. Alright, you probably like me to say more to something more than just me every once in a while. Snap decisions. I don't think I have any hats that would work. I oh, do have this actual. Yeah, you know what? It's an actual older Playline Integrity Toys Janae hat. It might have come on a no list, so I can't remember. Jade. See, the thing is, this hat does not want to stay on, so I'll usually take one of my um, bent straight pins. I'm doing I'm doing doing this too fast. It usually take a lot more time. You know, I used to take to use straight pins that are already bent because if the doll head bends them I'm not losing a straight straight pin to becoming a bent straight pin. Alright. Anyway, when you put the pin in the crown of the hat, it just looks like there's a button on top of the hat, which you know is what they do with hats. So, here we have, frankly not as casual as I thought she would be, a Janae. Alright, there are three dolls left in here. Made to move mountain climber. That Lori so generously shared when she found them on super clearance. 
so I was able to get good bodies on several heads to match this. And yes, this is a dress that I made out of, um, there's a salvage store in the Mid-South that's based in Tennessee. It used to be called Essex, but now it's called Bargain Hunt. And one of the things they sell is a lot of stuff that Target couldn't sell. So these were like drawstring bags from their, I think they were three dollars in Target's dollar section. And they didn't, apparently didn't sell at Target, and so they went to this place and they got marked down, marked down, marked down. So I got like several bags made out of this stuff for like a dollar and a half each, just to take them apart to use for doll clothes. So someday I will make more clothes like this. I already made a moto jacket like this for John's Butaru, but I keep forgetting because you can't really fold that stuff up like other cloth because the folds will be in there forever. I keep forgetting to get into the box where they are when I'm just looking for inspiration for dog clothes. So this shirt is another one of those made from the slightly smaller version of the extended shoulder long sleeve shirt plus more pieces of leftover scrap lace. Come on, her thumb is getting stuck on the threads on the shoulder seam. All right, there's and that thumb managed to go between the stitching and into the hem. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. Well, what I'm doing is struggling with the fingers. When I put dolls in sweaters, I usually put a sock over their hands, so it's harder for the uh, stray fingers to get caught on things, but that's the way it makes it too bulky to get through the sleeves of shirts. Yeah, I wasn't sure when I made this shirt if I would be putting it on Barbie size or Blythe size, so that changes things too. I think that's the last bit of this beige cloth I have. You know, beige isn't usually one of my colors, but I thought since I had made this combination of hot pink, black, and ivory lace that I could get away with having a beige base for it. Whereas initially I picked out prints, but then everything got lost. Anyway, yeah, this is the uh, mountain climber, and I did repaint her. And again, cloth. I got last summer, Nada brought a carload of cloth from a relative cloth stash that she was helping de stash. And uh, I got a lot of interesting assortments of cloth, including a bunch of little pieces that like just enough to make these pants. And this one is so uh, I actually paid a little bit of attention to which where the print placement was and I actually don't think for once the print placement is better on the back than on the front. Okay, shoes again. These won't fit. Well, too small. Alright. Gray, black, or pink shoes. Did I finish the whole sentence? I repainted her. I repainted this doll. I know I was thinking about finishing the sentence about how I repainted her. She's inspired by the Rainbow Brights the doll, you know, the doll and the metallic rainbow stripe dress. It's inspired by her face. That's why I have the solid blue eyeshadow, but of course, done in my style.
So she got shoes to coordinate with the pink stripe, pink lace stripe on her shirt. Alright, home stretch. Two dolls in here and then one bonus doll. So this doll is um, Young Sweetheart's Melinda Head. Young Sweetheart's was Mattel's mid 70s attempt to make articulated dolls. It was Melinda and Michael, they came together in a set. I think they only made one set of them. They're pretty much what the direct descendants, well, they threw the Spectra dolls to the gymnast Barbie. So when you see their bodies, it's a combination of familiar and unfamiliar. This is not her original body. This is a made-to-move body that Cosmo modified to put the prosthetic leg on, and he also modified the prosthetic leg to have double hinge knee. Oops. Just pulled her foot out. careful make sure I don't actually I think the entire leg on this side I think yeah he cracked the body open and swapped in the le the whole leg from the regular fashionistas doll instead of trying to get this thing to attach to the top of a Thinking and taking clothes off the side, the top of a made to move leg. So she's a little loose, but that's okay. And this, you know, if you do much with a Dremel, the Dremel gets away from you. So I used one of the bandages he made to cut that gouge end. Halloween Forever. Because again, I put her into something that hides those. I might take them off. They are not custom designs that Cosmo did. They are regular Halloween temporary tattoos. And so using yeah, I made the skirt on the doll in the last video, so this was what was evened up just about all that was left and made another scarf, because you might have noticed I like doll scarves. even though I often have problems getting them to sit the way I want them to. And I should probably take her down, hair down and redo it, but I like the uh, messy look. And I think I hear thunder. There is a slight chance of storms this afternoon here. All right, shoes. Those could work with the scarf pretty well. These are so out of date, and they don't really fit the um, modern doll foot very well. Or, like, it's not dark red, it's that washed out red. But I think I will still go with that because I like flat shoes. <laughs> it's one of the things I really like, I do like about modern dolls as they have the options for flat feet. Yeah. Okay. Alright, and this next doll I uh, changed her clothes in the first doll dressing video I put up, and her outfit is very popular, but I just love her so much that I want to change her clothes again. I want to put her in something a little more, 
a relatively sweet, relatively more sweet. Also, I think I mentioned before when I made the video of getting her dressed, this is a lot like the outfit she was wearing before, in a way, because she was wearing that multicolor sequined Sparkle Girls dress with the jacket over it, and those socks, and these goggles. So I want her to be a little, a little more different. Hopefully I can get the goggles back out of her hair without destroying her puffs. Because I put the hair in the pigtails after, I mean I curled the hair after the hair was put up. So if the hair was ever taken down, it would probably be nearly impossible for me to back up the way it was. Alright, again, another little last scrap of cloth. I mean, I used just about all of this cloth to make this shirt, and then there was like enough left that I made one of the panels on that color block shirt on the, for the boy dolls. And loads of odds and ends scraps of lace. So it's a nice thing for dolls if you only have five inches, four inches, three inches, two inches, even one inch of lace left. It can strategically quite often be used. But that still doesn't keep us from buying yards and yards of it at a time. All right, so yes, shirt fits. And this is also print that it ended up on the, on the guy dolls. I just realized that both the major parts of this outfit are cloth that also ended up on the guys. Alright, sweet lace and lizards. So she needs... Oh, are these lip shoes? Will these fit her? I don't think they are loose shoes. I might go with them. Anyway. Unless I want to dig out, like, worthy things. Let's see, I don't think curvy shoes quite fit blue foot. color doesn't match anything else, but it's an option. Okay, so she needs either pink or white shoes, I'd say. Oh, good doll gets good shoes. So yes, yeah, she will definitely need socks to fill those out. Are you getting familiar with my box of doll stuff yet? When I say socks, you say, oh, she's got to move all the boxes to reach them now. Right, I don't think I have any cute little frilly socks, but maybe I can... I mean, I do, but they're all being used by other dolls. I need to sew more. What if I do? Yeah, I think we're going to go with everybody's favorite Generation Girl Murray socks. Uh, dare I say, the best socks Mattel ever made. <laughs> I know that's a category without probably a whole lot of competition. I mean, these are pretty good too. But they don't fit as well as the Murray socks. Okay, 
Actually, I think what I'm going to do is carefully peel those bandages off since they are blue and red and no longer match her overall aesthetic. And I've already done this with some of the bandages that Cosmo Moore sent. I've carefully peeled them off the doll and put them back on the sticker sheet. I mean, I don't need to because there's some Nipra sheet, but waste not, want not, right? I mean, I know she doesn't need bandages, but I always liked using the bandages from the Dr. Ken set. And thanks to Floof, I usually have several bandages going on on my legs at once anyway. These are the Dr. Ken bandages. I bought two Dr. Kens back in the day, but one of them accidentally came with two sheets of um, bandage stickers. So they're metallic. So even though Dr. Ken's over 20 years old, I have still, through judicious use, managed to keep most of them. So it was so cool when Cosmo was able to make these bandage stickers. But yes, thanks to Floof, I always have band I tend to have bandages on my legs a lot these days too. Okay, anything else I want to give this gal? I think I've already used a lot of the, um... bracelets I might be inclined to give her on other dolls. I know I should generally put things away after the video is done, but it's so easy. You've seen the way I personally wear bracelets, I think, probably in some of my old videos. One is never enough. Alright. I think we're good. Now I have these Barbie glasses, but they're actually not very well painted. So, I don't know if they're worthy of this doll. I'm so afraid of messing up her hair. Probably only because it's fairly recently done. I'm sure in a few years it'll be like, yeah, whatever. Alright, even though these glasses are badly painted, I think I will put them on her like that. Okay, so we're right at one hour and one minute. I mean, and there goes the noisy mail truck. That's, I know that at this point it probably won't have been one hour and one minute because I will have edited out some things like getting Chip in and out the door and, and me dropping things off camera. So, um, there's her. Ooh, of course, I suspect everything this doll wears is going to look fabulous. So, so I have one more outfit made of, or potential outfit of things that I made and that Patty sent, but therefore the big dolls. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that doll and this video is going to be more than an hour, but we're going to have everybody finished. So I choose Alsika for this and I'm sure nothing is going to be visible. <laughs> 
in the camera view. And I am I do plan to keep this pink wig on her. So it's not like I'm gonna have to take a lot of time to go and rummage through my big doll box for another wig. As you can see, I haven't changed her since deep winter, since she's wearing a cardigan on top of a sweater dress. Which again, yes, dolls don't have to dress in ways that observe actual weather. But sometimes, you do. Taking off her shoes now. around for her creation, Elsica is a an Impel doll Vanessa head on a faux bobby body that I, the head I believe is second hand. The body is more than that. So the original owner had um, edited those weird faux bobby boobs. So she has not quite as much chest. I should probably take a wig off. I think it's taped on though. And the head and the body didn't match, so I dyed them both green with Rit Dye More Peacock Green. And then I airbrushed over it to try to even things out because I'd never dyed it all before. But you know me, I usually just jump right in whether I actually know what I'm doing or not. And then I do my best to make it work out in the end. And if it doesn't, I may never speak of it again. That's that's a big reason. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I have this, I have this project planned. I'm going to do this big project," and then that's why I don't usually do that. I prefer to get the project done, and then I'll tell people about it. That way, if it doesn't work out, I can pretend that it never happened. Unfortunately, that leads to people thinking that every thing I do turns out beautifully. It doesn't. I just, you know, I'm good at denial. This, the, the pattern I used for this shirt is completely untested. I think I drew it up specifically to make this shirt, but I actually bothered to draw it instead of cutting it out completely freehand so that if it does work, I could eventually work it out, maybe, and share it as a pattern for other people. Because again, oh, you can't see a thing I'm doing in the camera. It is another one of those drop sleeve shirts. Drop extended shoulder drop sleeve shirts. So actually I think, well there is no real good fit on these shirts. These shirts are inherently baggy, but I was afraid that it would be too short, but it looks like it is not at all too short. I mean it wouldn't have been a problem if it was crop top. I think this very 1980s style print would have worked perfectly as crop top. And I got this banana cloth from Pleasant Old Men in Pink Shirts, and it's it's pretty obviously the sleeves of an existing shirt that got cut off, and it turns out two short sleeves is just enough to make this shirt. Am I showing off her off for the camera is really limited, but okay, this fits her a lot better both way the skirt. And the shirt fit her a lot better than I thought they would. Because I am so out of practice sewing for this size. I wasn't sure what was going to go on. And then this is a hat that Patty sent. Again, it's a lot more wintry than the rest of her outfit, but I don't care. It looks like it's about the right. It's I'm sure it's blithe size. But since the bananas are yellow, I thought it would be fun to put this on her. My other option, I mean, maybe I won't do that for now. The other option I have thought of for this hat, since I don't have a lot of Blythe size dolls, but I also have my Sasha, who is currently in a hat that was crocheted for pull up. I thought Sasha might work well with this rather Dr. Seussian hat, too. 
Sasha's another one I need to make more clothes for and dress her more for um, summer because I didn't even make what she's wearing, I didn't even make for her. I made it for a doll that I thrifted and sold. All right, um, you got to look at her feet. And what if I fold that up? Fold it up and put it on at an angle. Again, you cannot see what I'm doing. All right, now I will go grab my shoes and socks for the dolls. All right, socks versus shoes. I'm out of practice with the dolls. Socks are in this one. I mean, this actually is a big mess, literally a mess of accessories. I'm not gonna tip it up because I'm afraid I'll dump it out on accident. Um, those could work. That's also Target. I forget why I was thinking this shirt was probably Target brand. The banana shirt. But this was... Somebody sent me a bunch of Target stuff to turn into doll clothes years ago. Oh, you know what? All my talk in the other videos about wanting to have short socks. I think... Uh, I might have made those for MSD size. I don't have my SD stuff separated from my MSD stuff. And yeah, these might be MSD. That was so close to being ankle socks, but yeah, those are smaller foot size. Fooey. That I'm not I'm not too keen on putting her in straight into shoes without socks because again she is painted dyed and painted and I don't want to uh, just start scraping everything. I feel like I have it actually organized. Is this is all in this piece of this stuff up here? I can't remember. I could give her a scarf too. Uh, she's going way into the hipster direction of looking at the scarf on top of that. Do I not have any more Short, lightweight socks. Short SD size. I have a lot of heavy um, leggings. Hmm. I thought I made a big variety of socks randomly for these dolls recently. Apparently not. It's just not summer. You know what? I'm gonna go with the not quite ankle socks that are probably actually MSD size. And see what shoes I come up with. I just realized I left the scarf on. Or maybe I'll just give her the basic. Or I could give her stumpies. I don't know if you can see if I'm holding up. Again, not the most summary of shoes. Those shoes, if these shoes leave scrapes, they're going to be scrapes. They're hidden by pretty much every other pair of shoes in existence. Alright, so I want to go with this scarf. This is a scarf that I made 
Again, local. Okay, there is a store. It's part of, I think it's part of a chain. I think they're around, but I there's one in Nashville. At least used to be on the other side of town, near where this doll person lived, called um, Smart Supply. And it's like a thrift store, but it's a thrift store of nothing but arts and crafts supplies. So she would go in there and buy their bags of weird and random cloth, get the stuff she wanted, and then bring the rest over to see if anybody else wanted the other stuff. And so that's where the cloth for this scarf came from. So here is Elsica. <laughs> very slowly angle her awkwardly in front of the camera and I will get her dressed and photographed and this project will be done. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, and nine dolls, and I still need to photograph the dolls from the last video and then photograph from this dolls from this video. So you will see all of these on Instagram at some point. And thank you for indulging me in this. Um, I may do this again sometime. This was pretty much unplanned, but you guys seem to like it, so we'll see. Thanks for watching, and have fun playing with dolls.